Hello and welcome to another free CAD tutorial where today I'm going to be showing you how to create this disc brake rotor. Now the disc brake rotor is a very crucial part to the disc brake assembly and it's also very crucial if you're ever planning on stopping in your car. So let's jump into it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a brand new document. So I'm going to click up here. I'm also going to then select onto this drop down button and select part design. Now on this particular page I'm going to set this to isometric and I'm going to select create a new drawing. I'm going to click on the XZ plane. I'm going to click OK. Now I should bring up this view here, which then allows us to start drawing our brake rotor. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the circular icon up here, click in the center so that it goes yellow, drag it out and click, right click to deselect the circular tool, and then I'm going to go up here and select the drop down here and constrain diameter. I'm going to click the actual circle itself. I'm going to set that to 300 millimeters, like so. Right click to clear. And I'm going to close. As you can see, we've now created our 300 millimeter diameter circle, which we are now going to extrude by clicking on the pad button up here. And we're going to keep that at 10 millimeters. So now what I want to do is create the cooling fins for the inside of the rotor. So I'm going to click on this face here, create a sketch. I'm going to toggle this button up here so that it creates construction lines so these all turn blue. I'm then going to click onto the circle, select the center, drag out, select the center again, and drag out. Right click to deselect, diameter constraint, click on the outer circle and make that 300, and click on the center circle and make that 135. So now what we want to do is just click up here on the drop down, click on end points and rim point. Then we're going to click on the center and the outer of this circle. And then we're just going to click about there. I want to constrain the diameter to 190 mil. And I want to constrain the horizontal center point from the original center point to 95, which should end up with something like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click this icon again up here, which will then toggle it back to normal construction lines. So this should go white. What I'm going to do is click on this B spline, click on this circle just around about there, going again to sort of similar center, just following the actual arc itself, and then we're going to click about there, just off the outer circle, like so. I'm going to right click just so that it gets rid of this, and then I'm also going to then draw another one, similar location, following a similar sort of path, like so. I'm going to right click again. So now what we need to do is organize these so that they are more of a curve. So there's no real measurement to this. It's more of a uh, an eye visual sort of look. So what we can do is by dragging this, we can actually alter the actual curve itself. So what I'm going to try and do is just get a similar curve to what we've got going on here. So I'm pretty happy with this one. Just maybe move that one slightly more this way so that it's not interfering with this so much. I'm going to drag this one so that it curves a bit more. So it's more to do with whatever you feel is more of a curve. You might be able to do it better than this, which is absolutely fine. And it's just about creating more of a natural curve to this actual arc. So I'm pretty happy with that. Move it this, and then I'll move this one back up slightly just so that it looks more curvy. More curvy, right? So I'm pretty happy with that one. So now, what we want to do is just go back up to here, click on center and end points, click on the center of this circle, click on this point here, make sure it turns yellow, and then this point here, and again, make sure it turns yellow. What that will do is that will just attach these two lines so that when we go to actually um, do it later on, where we go to extrude it, everything will extrude perfectly fine. So now what we need to do is just cap off this side here to make more of a flowing surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the end points again, click on this point here and this point here, and then I'm just going to do it so that it's sort of in the center like so. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Right, so without the drawing done, I'm going to click close, as we can see the drawing there. I'm going to click on pad. I'm going to set that to 8mm. Like 
so. And what I'm going to do is create a polar pattern. So what I do is I click on the icon up here, click on pad 001, click OK. It's normal to sketch, it's 360, I'm going to set this to 20. Now this may take a bit of time depending on your computer because it's got to rotate all of those objects and it's got to rotate 20 of them and figure out where it all is, but it should be pretty quick anyway. So what I'll do is click OK to that. And there we have it, we have our cooling fins for the inside of our brake rotor. So now that we've created the fins, we need to create another 300mm circle on this side of the fin so that it sandwiches in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the top face of this fin here and click on create sketch. I'm going to create a circle, click on the center and drag it out, click on constrain diameter, and make that 300, like so. Right click and then close. I'm then going to extrude that again and it's just going to be 10mm like the first one. I'm going to click OK. So now what we've got is we've got our sandwich of fins. Now what we need to do is create the holes that go in between every other fin for extra cooling. So what I'm going to do is click on this face here, click create a sketch, I'm going to create a construction line by clicking on this icon up here, I'm going to click on the circle icon, click on the center and drag it out. I'm then going to constrain that diameter to 300mm and I'm going to right mouse click to get rid of it. So now what I need to do is create a f end point using these three points, click on the center, click on the outside circle until it turns yellow, and then just place it roughly around there. Now I need to constrain that diameter again to the 190, and then the horizontal diameter to 95. So as you can see, it's the same arc as what we used when we were creating the vents, but this time the actual cooling holes are gonna go along this line here. Now it's gonna be six cooling holes all together. So what I'm gonna do is, is toggle this back to normal so there's not construction lines just normal normal lines and I'm going to place six circles along here making sure that the line is yellow when I click on it just to make sure because it will constrain it to the line oh, not that one like so so now as you can see, these are all constrained, should be all constrained to the actual line itself. So I can't actually drag off of the line, but it just moves along the line, which allows us to do our next bit. So what for, the first thing I'm actually going to do is actually constrain all the diameters. So I'm going to just click on this first circle, hold down shift, and I'm going to click on the, all the other circles. And I'm going to click on the constrain diameter. Now what it does is it asks me if I want to constrain all the elements to the same diameter, and I want to say yes. So I'm going to set that to 6mm diameter, like so, and they're all constrained like that. So what I now need to do is disperse these circles out across the arc, remembering that there is going to be a center boss here. So what I need to do is, is just move these down ever so slightly, just for easier purposes later on when it comes to actually doing it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this icon up here, which is going to be a fixed length, click on the center of the circle, Click on this point up here. I'm going to set that to 80 mil. We're going to do exactly the same here, center of this circle and the center of the part. And we're going to set that to 91.5. We're going to set again the center of this circle to the center of the part, 103. Center of the point, center of the part, 114.5. Circle, part. 126 and once more circle part 137.5 enter so now you can see they're all constrained to the actual arc itself so now what we're going to do is just click close and then I'm going to extrude those through all I'm just going to take it through to the other side of the part like so I'm going to click OK So the next thing we're going to do is create a polar pattern so that the actual cooling circles go the whole way around the outside of our rotor. So what I'm going to do is click on the polar pattern, click on the pocket valid, click OK, and I'm going to set this to 10. 
obviously still keeping it at 360 and a normal sketch axis. As you can see, it rotates it perfectly around the outside of our part. And I click OK to that. And there we have it. Our cooling holes going through the center of our rotor. Now if everything is constrained correctly in the previous steps, then obviously you should have no holes going through the actual fins themselves. So they should be all equally dispersed, missing every other fin, like so. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the boss for the outside of the rotor. So I'm going to click on this face here, create a sketch, I'm going to draw a circle at the center. I'm going to constrain that to 135 millimeters and close that. I'm now going to extrude that by 20 mil and there's the start of our boss. I'm then going to go to the other side of our rotor, click on this face, create a sketch, draw a circle and that's also going to be 135 millimeter diameter like so. But this time we're going to extrude it through our part by 18 mil like so. We are then going to create another sketch on the inside here. So I'm going to click on this face here, create a sketch, and this particular circle is going to be 115 millimeters, like so. And then we're also going to extrude this through the face by 20 mil. I'm going to click OK to that. The fourth and final circle will be a 65 millimeter diameter circle on this internal face inside here. Click create a sketch, create a circle, center, constrain the diameter to 65, and then we're going to extrude that all the way through. Through all. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just create the bolt holes on this face here. So we're going to create a sketch, create a construction line by toggling this, construction circle, sorry. Click on the center, bring it out. I'm going to set that to 90 millimeters, like so. I'm then going to create a construction line from the center point until it turns yellow here, so it's then locked, like so. I'm going to toggle it back to normal lines. I'm going to click on the construction circle and click on this point here. I'm going to constrain that diameter to 14.3, click OK, and then I'm going to close that sketch. Now I want to do is extrude that through all, so that it goes through the actual face itself. I'm going to click OK to that one. Now what I want to do is, is create four others around the outside by clicking the polar pattern, pocket 004, OK, and setting that number to 5, and clicking OK. Now what I need to do is just create a groove going around the outside of this boss. So I'm going to click on this face here, create a sketch, circle, one, and another circle. I'm then going to strain, constrain the diameter of the center circle to 135, and constrain the outside to 145. And I'm going to close that, and I'm going to pocket, so cut into the actual job itself, by 2.5 mil, and hit enter. Now we need to do is chamfer the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this edge here, chamfer. I'm going to add a reference, click on this edge, and then I'm going to add another reference and click on this edge here. Now the chamfer is set to one millimeter, and I'm happy with that, so we're going to say OK. If you'd ever like parts to stand out to other parts by changing the colors, all you have to do is click on to model, right click on body, click on appearance, and then change the shape color to whatever you'd like. So let's go for a green, like so. So there we have it, a brake rotor. I hope you enjoyed creating this. And if you have any tips and tricks on how I can improve my future content, then just let me know in the comments down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.